man on the brightest breakfast show on television. I think, thank you. It's the truth. <laughs> and I that was a shadow. Australia. Glad you could be with us. We'll be right back after these few words of wisdom. Say hello to Kerry Ann for me. What a gorgeous uh, hunk of woman. <laughs> you beautiful thing. You frightened me. <laughs> and the next minute, you know, it's, it's, you're as popular as herpes on a honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, and the man's really difficult to look at. <laughs> Good morning, Steve. It's Kevin. Oh, I'm sorry. Could you explain a little bit more about the part that you play, Lita? Yes, uh, actually, it's <coughs> Linda Carey. This morning, we'd like to introduce you to Mr. Ian McDonald from the Lions oh, thanks, Club. Thanks, guys. Mr. Lauren. <laughs> Watching Good Morning Australia live from Perisher Valley, the top of Australia, and what a sensational two days we're going to have. Good morning, everyone. We're on board this grand lady with the privilege of being the second television program ever to be broadcast live from the QE2. What a fantastic day for Good Morning Australia, quite historic, as we come to you live from Santa Monica Pier. As the sun rises over Brisbane, we're coming to you live from Expo 88. It's a remarkable venture. It is Australia Day. It's the 26th day of January 1989 and we are coming to you live from the Sydney Opera House. Good morning Australia. Welcome to Thursday the 28th day of June and we're coming to you live from beautiful snow-covered Perisher Valley. Good morning Terry. Good morning Australia. I am Kerry Ann Kenley and this is Monday the 21st day of January 91. Welcome everyone to a new look. Uh, good morning Australia. <laughs> dead again. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I think I thank you, and these are my friends who do this to As me. As Glenn Shorrock would say, if he were here, happy anniversary, baby. Well, thank you. Yes, you happy were, anniversary. I mean, it's extraordinary to actually um, think it. Ron Wilson, come over here. Hey, come on, Robbie. Come on. I know you've got your jeans on. Don't be embarrassed. And there's a little cake there for... And what a beautiful thing from oh, Alan Jones. Yes, I just opened this up. Alan Jones, 2UE in Sydney. Thank you very much. Oh, I, I, addictive uh, listening, as far as I'm concerned. Five to seven, I switch off my radio every morning because we yeah. get busy after that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, marvellous, beautiful flowers. Thank you. Thank you, Paul Melville, very much for setting up all these little gems this morning. Yes. And Tim Cobbin upstairs and all the uh, girls and guys in the office. I think I really thank you. I was just thinking after 10 mm -hmm. years nurturing, coddling a career, working very hard, being a dedicated person, and I've listened... <laughs> Who was that person? I've, I've, I've listened to the last two hours, and the concept that now has arrived, my persona happens to be that I party, that but, I'm a nice person... Yes, without and, doubt. And um, what was the third thing? I'm a nice person... But you should person, be singing. And I should be singing. I mean... <laughs> Where's the credibility? <laughs> well, listen, I've seen you sing. I mean, don't take away from the singing. Mm. I mean, you can build out a tune. Oh, you, this girl can do shout Just with the best bit. of them. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> what do you want, Gary? You want us to say goodbye? Okay. You want us to play some music? And Hermie done? and Gary, they were there right from the start. But uh, thank you for a great ten years. And uh, cheers, cheers. How will I know we'll be here next? Uh, we will have a wonderful day. We'll see you on Monday as we have start the, uh, the next ten. Joe. Anything around a pool you should be very careful. You should be totally surprised. Come on. <laughs> Great stuff. But after three years, the ratings begin to slide, and the axe finally falls on the program. And you naturally weren't very happy about it, were you? No. Ratings weren't all that bad, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> ratings weren't all that weren't bad. Weren't all that bad, weren't they? So why do you think they axed it? I think there were a lot of reasons. Would you like to go into them sure. now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm happy to. I'm game if you are. Well, that, you're the one still working here. <laughs> hey, up. That buy's come yet, lad. All the way from London, ladies and gentlemen, Kerry Ann's best mate, Patricia Graham. I mean, we actually went out for pizza once and didn't come home for two days. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't tell John... We don't no. really know. <laughs> but how long are you here now for, Patricia? Oh, Maybe we should Friday, Friday, darling. Oh. Oh. I've got to say, the last time I literally sang or did that song was the last midday show. This could really finish off the career. <laughs> <laughs> you have the hat and the things and the shoulder pads and the things. It's yeah, not too much true. with the outfit, though, is it? Yeah, no, no, no. The outfit was too much before you put that down. <laughs> <laughs> but the crew is here uh -huh. to capture any embarrassing moments you could have. Oh, fabulous. If you're drunk, that would be great. We've had John Stamos. Oh, yeah, he was very jet lagged. Very careful, it's been totally surprised. Come on. Come on. <laughs> she says she likes my watch, but she wants Steve's AP. And she stay up for hours watching QVC. She said she loves my songs, she bought my MP3. And so I put her number in my bold BB. I got your. Your trophy wife. Why so serious? Give us a smile. So where's your class if you are wrong? In all the right ways, all my underdogs. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Right on time. People who like people. Oh, the luckiest people in the world. Oh, oh. oh this is classy. Yes. What's your jaw? Pointed one yeah. at the yeah. front, but you, the audience, you stayed with us for a whole bunch of time. I know I've made friends with so many of you. I hope we've been a companion to you. I hope you've enjoyed what we've tried to do, the information, the entertainment. We've loved it. I sincerely believe I will see you in the future. Thank you, people. Thank you. And thank you. Yay! <laughs> The Q.
queen of daytime TV, the dancing queen, the one and the only, Kerry Ann Kennelly. <laughs> Are you going to sing as well? I heard you sing once, I think it was about 20 years ago. You were quite good. I think that was the last time. People yes. pay me not to sing now. <laughs> you ready to do it? I haven't done proper television for a while. while. <laughs> Some would argue neither have I. All right, let's go to the UK now where yeah, the let's excitement... Go. Let's go. What right time, now. What time is it? Get, no. What time you're is it? playing No, go? you are just trying to get out of singing and dancing. It's not going to be that easy. <laughs> oh, Second one is hey, 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 yeah. Do you need auto cue or what? <laughs> Don't forget to say you will. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, hey. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that was great, eh? See, I knew you could do it. And they smell a bit Oops. mothbally, Kerry. Oh, that's <laughs> <all right. laughs> great pleasure of doing a shoot to raise awareness for Kidney Week. Yeah, Tell so me more about it. Yeah, this week is uh, Red Undies Week and it's to raise awareness of kidney disease, mm. which is like a major silent You're killer in Australia. You're not going to take your hands off now, I'm not ready. No. No. Please welcome to the dance floor, Kerry ann Kennelly and her partner, Carmelo Pizzino. With the 20th century. In this text, your red dreams can it come true. Are you ready to make someone new? And you must have a ball every week. It was great fun. Thank you. Thank you and so much. And for doing, my Marilyn. We got the Marilyn, we got the dancing, we got, it was a great show. <laughs> How are you? Good. You look great. Feeling good. Two weeks though since, since you were told you have breast cancer. Kerry ann you have breast cancer. Mm. Has the shock worn off? Oh, I, I definitely no, because I, you still, you know, it's hard to come to terms with that. It is like being in a Mack truck hitting a wall at about 180 k's. What was your first feeling, your first reaction? Was it fear? Was it disbelief? Um, it was the, whoops, I think I know exactly what that is. I mean, your blood does virtually go cold. And, you know, a little bit of knowledge because of all the interviews I've done uh, can be a dangerous thing. Mm. And I think that's the scariest part. And then, you know, that, you know, the short times of not actually knowing, getting results. They take 48 hours waiting for those words that you, you actually know in your own heart without being paranoid what they're going to tell you. So it's a bugger, really. Well, <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, mm. there's no family history. You're healthy. Mm. You're happy. Like you say, you do all the checks. Mm. I, I just wonder, how do you react when somebody makes it official? Look, I, I'm, I'm not unique. I, this, I am now a statistic. Um, this and what I have and what I will go through is a very, very well-trodden path. People listening to this right now are enduring it, have endured it, or are about to endure it. I don't want to die. That'd be really inconvenient. I've got a lot more things to do and a lot more people to talk to. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll get on with it. Take us back to the day that you discovered it. R run us through that story of of how you first got an inkling that something was wrong. It's an extraordinary one. It sounds really silly. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it, it really did. It, it, it's almost too naff for words. Um, 
I was asked to fill in for Kylie and sit with Larry doing the show. All a bit of fun, yeah, terrific. And Carmelo, um, and you know, he and I have become very, very dear friends. And he said, why don't we do the Marilyn song, Trying on the Dress? I literally was sort of fiddle-faddling about and all of a sudden, um, the day before, I've gone, oh, that's different never noticed that before, simply because I was trying on the beaded bra with the dress that uh, Carmelo said, you know, I should wear. You discover a, a little lump, mm. something's different, and then what did you do? You just got straight onto it? Absolutely. That day, I knew. I knew. Right then and there. Um, I, I, without being paranoid, um, and I don't think you can be too paranoid with that sort of stuff. But you try to keep logical, get on with it. You go and have the appropriate test. You do the ultrasound, you do the mammogram. And you know when they come back and do it twice, you know it's an issue. Kerry Ann, the professional, attacks this straight away. Mm. Kerry Ann, the personality, attacks it with a beautiful smile. Mm. How does Kerry Ann personally handle it in those moments when the lights are off, when the camera's not on? go hysterical in my mind. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, your mind does play terrible tricks. And I, I, I won't and refuse to worry about something till I know I have to. Behind closed doors, have the emotions come out? Oh, yeah. You know, you sort of uh, sit and have a cry and a tear and, and, and go through all that. But again, it's, it's, it's not productive. But it, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Is it true? that you decided to defer the surgery so you could party on the final night of Dancing absolutely. with the Stars next year. <laughs> Come on! It is true. It, absolutely. You didn't want to do it on the Monday because you'd be hung over after Sunday night. <laughs> is that right? Probably did. <laughs> um, yeah, there's no question. If, if my surgeon had said, uh, I'll be in at four o'clock today, mm. I'd be there. Um, I, I do take advice, don't tell my husband, um, <laughs> or most people I've worked with, I do take advice, but you know, there is a few days flexibility on this. And you know, who doesn't want to dance with Carmelo? <laughs> Come on! There will be people who's, who will say, here's Kerry Ann, she's laughing at this, this is serious, she needs to take it seriously. Why? Are you taking it seriously? Oh, I'm taking it seriously. I've taken it so seriously within virtually seven days. I've done everything that is appropriate. I made sure I, I got the best advice as quickly as possible. I've had the right tests a couple of times over, the right biopsies, booked in everything. I'm not mucking around with this. I don't muck around. This is serious and Anybody who would even vaguely suggest um, I won't take it seriously um, is probably nuts. I will fight to have the attitude I want and I won't have anybody tell me how I should think, how I should act. I will do it the way I want to. Breast cancer is one of the most common forms of the disease in Australia. One in ten women will be struck with it during their lifetime. More than 35 Australian women are diagnosed with breast cancer each day. One of them is TV icon Kerry ann Kennelly. I'm not unique. I, this, I am now a statistic. Um, this and what I have and what I will go through is a very, very well-trodden path. Since discovering the pea-sized lump in her breast five months ago, just five months ago, she's faced her cancer battle with a smile and now she's joined the crusade against the illness by becoming an Avon Breast Cancer Ambassador. People listening to this right now are enduring it, have endured it or are about to endure it. Avon is the world's number one sponsor for the breast cancer cause. Since 1996, has raised over $10.5 million through the sale of pink ribbon products in Australia and New Zealand.
And we're happy to say that Kerry Ann Kennelly joins us now live in the studio, where she loves to be, live in a TV live studio. In the <laughs> love it. Good morning, everyone. Good, Good morning, to see morning. you, Kerry. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. been almost five months since the diagnosis. I've forgotten it was five months. Well, and, and it, apparently it came the day before you came in here to, you know, to, to fill in for Kylie that day. Mm. So, the, you know, we're very aware of the timing of this. How? How are you going? What, where are we up to? Well, I'm glad to say, I can sort of officially say I'm cancer-free now. I did the surgery that was very, very successful. And then they biopsy afterwards. You wait five agonising days to get the result. That was fabulous. Then you do radiotherapy, six and a half week, 32 sessions, sort of Monday to Friday, yeah. just to sort of mop up anything that might be left behind. So officially, I'm now back to being the same one in 10 woman that may, and the 90% that won't get cancer. So it's time to raise money and try and find a cure or yeah. at least early detection was the key in my my case. Karen, I'm interested when you said five five months. Does mm. it seem like five weeks ago or does it seem like five years ago? Both. Yeah. It's a okay. weird, weird experience to go through. In fact I just saw the piece from today tonight and I started to get hives all over because I remember that day. Mm. So mm -hmm. you remember certain days and things absolutely mm. vividly and you just go, I, I remember saying those words and I remember getting you get all hot inside and your palms start to go sweaty because it's the unknown fear. which is the fear mm. is is just the worst. You've always done everything 100%. Hmm. Um, and you've now focused, you're now focused on this fight. Yeah. Right? Well, so I think it's important. Hmm. Not only for me, everyone. I mean, yesterday was Breast Cancer Pink Ribbon Day. And it was interesting, a lot of the speeches yesterday were devoted to exercise. They've now proven that causal link between fitness, diet, and exercise, right. and cancers of all kinds, let alone breast cancer. And on top of that, we have to do more research, which is where Avon... I looked at a lot of companies. Avon, and I know they've done $10.5 million in the last few years for Australia and New Zealand, but around the world, globally, they have raised $780 million million wow. dollars Jeez. and that big girl walk there you saw that's called the uh, the breast cancer crusade it happens in New York every year right and uh, how clever cleverly Avon have put together little glass baubles so if you do something creative and take a photograph put it on the Facebook you can go for uh, a chance and a shot to go to New York how okay. good is that right. uh, what message do you want to get across Kerry Ann early because detection you... right Mammograms. Mammograms, but also, um, you know, detection. Girls have got to check themselves. I didn't. And how many stories have we done over the years as people in the media? Every year we roll around and do the same thing. I hadn't done it. I was lax. And that's what makes this story interesting because sitting in these chairs, we do mm. uh, cover this topic regularly. You would have heard this story. You would have interviewed mm. the survivors. You would have interviewed families and the experts a million times. Mm. And yet you weren't moved to act. Exactly. And I would sit there and talk to a breast cancer patient and you do it appropriately, you do it with sensitivity, but it's always them. It's mm. them. They're over there. And all of a sudden it was me. That's, a, that's scary. Because yeah. I'm now this year doing it, I'm looking on the inside out, not the outside looking in. Yeah. Vastly different experience. And how's the Kerry Ann now different to the one of five months ago? Still making trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Still difficult, apparently. Yes. <laughs> I did that at 100 miles an hour the same. Because there were a few people who, who apparently uh, were a little perturbed that they didn't think I was taking this seriously. Don't ask me how they form those opinions. But we all know people form opinions. Sure. And, and I heard that a few times. And I'm going, what are you kidding? I'm doing this the same way as I've done everything else. Right. And I'll do it, you know, the right. proverbial my way. Right. A and I did. But I also recognise how lucky... I, am, I found it early, mm. but we have to, to raise the money for research, hence the, the little baubles. See, the, aren't these the cutest little things? Yeah, well, Christmas is around the corner too. Yeah, Gorgeous. but they're the proper little glass ones. Yeah. All oh. the money, profit from these goes. So just go onto the Facebook at um, Avon. I, I just think they're the cutest things. Oh, oh that's the, the big bauble. If you do something creative, that I, how good would that walk in New York be? Yes, that would because be Because you can shop along the way. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's great to see you. You Thanks, look terrific. Karen. You've Thank inspired you. a, lot of, a lot of women to act, and you've saved some lives along the way, no doubt. So great to see you today. Thank you. All I right. was glad to know after the story came out, especially in Victoria, apparently four times as many women made appointments for mammogram. Yeah, and it's, it, it's a good feeling because it's important. I was lax. Don't be slack as me. A horrible good thing, but something good has mm. come out of it. Thanks, Kay. To find out how you can support Avon's fight against breast cancer, just head to the Daily Show info section on our website all the details there for you.